go deeper and deeper. Greetings, dear ones, I am, I am cryon of magnetic service, yet again, the human being sits in a place where he stretches the imagination of those who think in 3D. And he begins a thickness of love that pours from one side of an interdimensional reality to one which is in single digits. And the process of the channeling, as described earlier, is to open the door. That's all. And it is the hardest thing for a human being to do is to open the door. It is the subject of our brief time together tonight. And if you opened the door and you ask what is happening in this land, there would be a message of love and comfort and one that says, be patient and hold on. 1987, we spoke of the weather shifts, and here they are. And if you look hard, we spoke of this thing that goes on even here as we speak. We said there'll be, there'll be lands that used to be fertile. There will not be anymore. And we said there will be those places which couldn't grow a thing that will then turn into a growing paradise. A time of too much water, a time of not enough. And those who sit in this place are sampling all of that. And you're not alone. For we spoke to those in what you call America. And we spoke of a time when the winds would come on a regular basis stronger than they ever had before. And we gave them advice. Good advice. When you see these things happen and you see the water cycle begin to shift, take care of yourself. Know that you're in for what we would call a ride and that it is going to last a while and we said to those in America move away from the coasts and they didn't we said build your houses on stilts and they didn't humans are like that you know stubborn 
what you have in this land right now is going to be here a while. And so we say to you, in the process of this earth shift, take care of yourself. For these things which are happening now in this land will repeat themselves on a cycle for a while. And you could go back and you could rebuild just the same, and you may. Or you could decide to reach out and discover what you can do that's different to withstand the winds, the heat, and yes, even the fires. And there are ways. And then there are those who may not wish to move back to those areas. Oh, crying, why can't you just say that it's going to be over? It is this way. It is those in this room who have accelerated the time factor of geology itself. These cycles are coming at you faster than you thought. And there's nothing wrong with a the planet. There's nothing wrong with a planet. Let me give you some advice and you, you may not understand. You're going to see the disappearance of some things that to you are precious and to, and to spirit are just cyclical. You will see wildlife. You will see agriculture. You'll see some trees and some other things disappear from the face of the earth. And you're going to say, why does it have to be this way? And you will cry for all of it. And we say this to you, listen to this, long before humans were here. There are certain plants, there are certain animals, there are certain reasons why they would come and exist and hold an energy and then go away. It is part of the cycle of life. It is part of the cycle of water. It is part of holding energy for the planet. It is part of getting out of the way for human nature and consciousness to fill a gap and a void that they've been holding for you. And now they're done. It is when humans came that they've decided to save everything with a fuzzy face. <laughs> and cry when they're gone I'm telling you that some of the face the faces that you want to save are only here for a while to set a stage for you celebrate them but don't cry when they're gone for they have played their part as well as the lands have played their part there is a purification going on in this land and you know it don't you it's not an accident, a purification. I know where I am. I sit in a place that's pure. Maybe you never thought of that. There is an awakening going on in Australia. I told my partner to come back. A decade had passed and I said, come back. Or there's something happening here. The attributes of the very land that you stand on now, the land that you live on now, is unique to the planet. For in this place, it is pure. And the purity of it is caused by the fact the very few humans have been here. And you can go back through history and you can look at it. And you will find that very, very few wars have been fought here. That the land is pure, does not have human drama layered upon it like the other places in the earth. There have been no giant dramas. There has not been mass death. 
like so many places. There have not been inappropriate governments that would slay their people. There have not been giant wars that have been fought with craters pockmarking the land. There have not been civilizations come and go and be buried due to hate and violence and battle. It's pure. And it's starting to awaken. There is a purification going on in this land. And it's difficult. And we say to you, Lightworker, you are in the right place at the right time. For as Gaia begins to shift and change and the vibration starts to raise, is not it a coincidence that you chose your lifetime to watch it and be in it and hold your light? Did you ever think of that? What you do about this, whether you fear these things, or whether you build accordingly and move accordingly and understand that it's going to be here a while. That's the maturity of the light worker. You want to hear from spirit that it's going to be over soon. Well, it isn't. And that's your choice because this is the shift. And it's happening worldwide. You are among many who will watch these things and perhaps cry for the animals and cry for the foliage. Don't, for they have taken their place and held the energy that they should hold. And now they are part of the shift with you. Think of it this way. They leave so that human consciousness can replace them with love. I am telling you that this country is awakening. Light workers, more all of the time, are going to make a difference in so many areas. And it's time. It is time. I wish to, to speak generally of this getting in touch with the esoterics of who you are. It's so difficult to describe these things which the human mind cannot conceive of. Humans wish to think that they can think about anything. Humans believe that because they are the top of the evolutionary ladder in thought, that their intellect is boundless. If you ask many humans, is there anything you cannot conceive of? They will say, oh, we can conceive of anything, just try us. Well, you can't conceive of interdimensional things. You can't conceive of home. You cannot even conceive of your God divinity because it is beyond your thought process, beyond your ability to go there. And therefore, these things cannot be presented in logic to you. We're going to give you some information. We're going to paint a picture for you about connection and getting in touch. Here is the premise. A few light workers in this country getting in touch with their divinity creates a light. That light actually changes the grid of the planet. That speeds up the changes of Earth. It makes the transition of the water cycle even faster. It means that the more of you getting in touch and awakening change the consciousness of many. Cryon, how does that work? Cryon, you have said that there is an awakening. How many have to awaken? Not many. Not at all. Well, how does that work? How could just a few make such a giant change on this continent? And I will again explain something to you that you need to understand, you need to hear. Your work, getting in touch 
with the divinity in yourself the interdimensional parts of yourself actually changes reality cry on that is difficult to understand all right I'm gonna give you a metaphor a man who has a light in the darkness sees around him those who are flailing and having a difficult time with their path so using his light he carefully builds a path in the brush and when he is finished there now is a path an easy one that he has built because he had light and then he backs away it isn't long before those in the dark find the path and they traverse it so one man with light has created a path that others have found and now this path is easy for many because the one did the work just the same with a lighthouse isn't it it stands there and shines its light guiding the ships into the safety of the harbor one lighthouse many ships they don't have light the lighthouse does and this is the way of it in its simplicity it is the way of it the one helps the many crying what are the examples of that I will tell you as I've said before <laughs> the one goes home with light let us say your family doesn't believe any of these things let us say you didn't even tell them you were coming to a channeling meeting <laughs> I know who's here when you go home let us say that you've been touched there's been joy there's been a cellular shift let us say you glow a little bit and when you go home you can't say a word you can't say a word and you may say I want so bad to tell them what I feel what I've discovered they won't believe it they don't care I wish they did they would make wonderful light workers but they don't and they probably never will and you bemoan that do you not you say oh if only let me tell you something light worker your testimony is in your personality what do you do next are you more tolerant are you more patient you know who's gonna pick it up first don't you that's the children whether they're your children or your grandchildren or your friends children they're gonna look at you and say I don't know what happened to you but I like it <laughs> it's the children who speak up first mom dad I know you went to those meetings keep going because whatever happened is good <laughs> we can see the love the way you treat us and your patience the way you treat dad your patience the way you treat mom your patience and even if the family never acknowledges this belief I will tell you they're going to see your light you might think they're going to be afraid of it or put off by it it is the opposite they may never come to a meeting like this oh but they're gonna like who you become hmm. they may even fall in love with you all over again hmm. the love of God does that it does that esoteric it is I'll give you some getting in touch information and now we get spooky things that you wouldn't believe the way things work out of 3d I will show you some things to get in touch with that you didn't expect obscure they are it is time for advanced information some will shake their heads saying don't understand this part those who sit here 
may say, well, I'm trying to get in touch with my divine self. Cryon says, others say, many say, that if I can do that, I'm going to spread light. I'm going to enhance Gaia's vibration. You're right. And because human beings are extremely singular, you're going to try to get in touch with one thing. Wrong. <laughs> Let us explain the complexity. I love to tell these stories. On the other side of the veil is where you begin, angel. Does everyone in here understand you are forever a piece of God? This is a temporary journey that you do many times. There'll come a day, perhaps thousands of earth years from now, when the test will be over. And you'll say, well, what happens to us then? And I'm going to tell you, you do it again somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do and in that somewhere else there'll be cryon and others like me who serve you with love who come in and hold your hands and try to explain vibratory shift to help you to improve wherever that somewhere else is it is part of a test not a view of energy. It happens over and over. This is not the first planet you have been on. It is not the last one you will be on. And the sooner you understand there actually is a plan that makes sense and is loving and has purpose, the more you can relax with it. Perhaps you can even make it go faster. This planet of free choice could very well be headed for graduation. It is your ability to do that. Do you know what an awakening population will do? This, this land is ripe for this. It is pure. It is clean. And when you have the dirt of the earth that has had no war of magnitudes and no layers of battle, you have a connection with Gaia that is easy. Those who came first in this land know a lot about that. Ask them. It is so with many of what is called the First Nation peoples to ally with the earth and know what it feels like, know how it reacts to your consciousness back and forth. Oh, it is pure here. It is very pure here. On the other side of the veil, let me take you on a journey yet again. You're over there, about ready to come into the earth. And a process begins. Now listen, because you didn't expect this. But when I tell you this, you're going to understand. We've discussed this before, but you need to hear it again, light worker. You cannot come into this planet with your whole core soul. It's too big. You'd burn up. And so when you come in, in whatever fashion you wish to say, when you step into this reality called Earth as you, part of you, stays on the other side of the veil. You split. You split. And it isn't into two parts because there is no counting parts in an interdimensional soup that is energy. The only part that you can count is the one that got here. And it's you and it's one body and one consciousness seemingly filled with interdimensional DNA. And there's a piece of you, a big piece, that stays behind. Think of it. Almost seven billion human beings have a piece of them on the other side of the veil. And you might say, well, what are they doing there? I'll tell you. 
for light workers they help to arrange manifestation don't you understand there's got to be a part of you on the other side to create synchronicity it has to be that way so many of you believe it's just God doing things for you not understanding it's you doing things with you well what if you're not a light worker what are they doing I'll tell you what they're doing I'll tell you what they're doing they walk next to their counterparts on this planet hoping they'll wake up what some of you have felt is a bevy of angels around you is you with you and the one who is in depression and sorrow and fear and drama even the one who hates is surrounded by a core group of themselves just waiting to serve that one to give them peace to give them balance to connect to be in touch only with permission what are they doing some of them weep because they see so much potential and no awakening Oh, if there were only a little bit of light, this person could see better. And that's where you come in. <laughs> light worker. Building paths. Going to dark places and holding your light. Going to work where there's nobody who cares about anything spiritual but you. And you wonder what you're doing there. You're holding the light. That's what you're doing there. And it's hard, isn't it? It's hard. Don't you think we know it? Don't you think the other part of you knows it? You are not alone. And that's just one aspect. Oh, there's more. What about the higher self? Well, what is that? That isn't the other part of you. This is the difficult one, my partner, so go slow. <laughs> the higher self is the core of you which is here every single time no matter who you are you think you've had past lives let me tell you something they're not something in the distance that you'll never discover your higher self was there for each one of them <laughs> that means that this core spiritual self of yours knows everything about you and who you've been it starts to change the picture a little, doesn't it? For those energies which you call past lives are present, alive, and available to your higher self. The higher self is you, not the split of you, the core God part of you. One higher self representing many, many lifetimes. Look how powerful you are. Look how wise you must be to have been here that many times and have one higher self responsible for each lifetime. All that you learned is there. All of the spiritual things that you've done is there. How would you like that connection? Well, it's available. Well, there's two connections. All right, let's get more complicated. What about the crystalline grid? This is a connection. It is a connection to Gaia. It's a connection you need to have. It's a connection we speak of that you are supposed to get in touch with. Well, that's a third one. And the human being now starts to ask the esoteric but intellectual esoteric questions. Well, which one first? And then what? And how long? And how much? And what duration? You do. You know you do. And the answer is always yes. Those are silly questions. 
Because there is no how much and there is no first or second or third. These are in a circle. They all exist together in the energy soup, which is you, which is divine. And you might say, well, with that complexity, what am I supposed to do? I'll tell you, you trust spirit and the system to go in and select what you need when you need it. What about that? You're not turning over anything to anything or anyone. You are using your intuition and becoming interdimensional and letting the tools work for you without you having to figure it out. Well, that's only three. There's another one, of course. What about the Akash itself? What do you mean, Cryon? There is an energy not only with you, but also in what is called the cave of creation, the Akashic record, which interfaces through a karmic energy with so many other human beings. And you've got to stay in touch with it. It helps to guide your life. It helps you stay on the path. It helps you to know when to get off the path. All of these connections all of these things to stay in touch with crying my head is swimming now you've got me in touch with so many pieces and parts I don't know what to do hmm. let's say you go outside the meeting is over and you climb into your automobile and there is someone who is saying excuse me you can't drive this machine. And you say, well, why not? Because you have no idea what the parts are doing. Here's the manual. You better study it. The automatic transmission is especially interesting. <laughs> there's duration. There's fluid mechanics. There's physics. How long? How much? When? How? When is first gear? When is second gear? When is third gear? And you would laugh, would you not? And you'd throw them out the door and you would simply go to dinner <laughs> using hundreds and thousands of pieces and parts. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? And that is where we are going. You're used to that. And it's a trust factor. And it's in 3D. And it works every time. If you can apply those kinds of concepts to staying in touch and getting connected, it's going to be easier. Oh, Cryon, you got to give us some advice. There's got to be a list. Please give me a list. That's what 3D does for you, doesn't it? I'm going to give you concepts. It's not a list, it's in a circle. So even though in three dimensions, in the time frame that you're in, even though I'm going to give you one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, pay no attention to the order in which they're given. They're in a circle. A circle has no beginning and no end. So, for just a few moments, get out of 3D. We're going to talk about getting in touch by giving you not a list, but a circle of concepts that have no beginning, no end, no priority. There isn't one that is more important than the other. They exist together and they can be done all at once. It is the best we can do for a list. And here they are. Number one. <laughs> Allow the concept of belief. Oh, crying, I'm a believer. Not really. Not really. All that you've learned all your life, truly, beats you away 
from a truth. Pure belief is one that says, I am ready gradually to open the door to allow things unseen to be real. Another one in the circle. Allow, allow for emotion. There are those who would say, well, emotion gets in the way of my thinking. Then let it. Do you know what passes untouched through the veil? Do you know an interdimensional energy that passes untouched through the veil? I'll give you a few. I'll give you a few. One is love. Another is joy. Another is laughter. Did you know that God laughs? Do you know that angels laugh? Do you know that they love? Of course you do. So feel it. And when the love of God comes and sits on your lap this day, could you let yourself weep a little because it's so beautiful? Or will you hold it back and say, well, I'm not going to do that. Because that's emotion, you see. Emotion clears the soul. Sometimes you have to weep in joy and love just to know you're real and you exist. It's not sadness, it's joy. You weep at the birth of your children. You weep in joy at the process of life. Are you sad about it? There's a place for it. It's a concept. Allow the concept of intuition. Well, I, I do, Cryon. If you really did, then why is it when something happens, you say, I knew that would happen, I should have listened. <laughs> You're not allowing for intuition, are you? No, you know. You're fighting it. A thought occurs to you, and you say automatically, well, that's come from me, I'll discount it. What, what if you said to yourself, that has come from me. That means it's come from God. I'm going to look into it. Allow for intuitive energy to help guide you. This is part of the soup. It's a concept. Allowing belief. Allowing emotion. Allowing intuition. It's a concept. It's in a circle all of these things to get in touch you don't have to know how many parts dear one you really don't here is a concept in the circle image yourself larger than you are I mean spiritually not physically don't gasp <clears throat> The fact that you've known the Merkaba. Some of you said the Merkaba. Call it what you wish. The spiritual core energy of the human being is huge. Is huge. Reaches out, it does. Many meters, it does. Can you be that big? Can your light be that big? Can you imagine yourself bigger than you can reach? Because you are. Now this is difficult because it requires interdimensional thinking and belief and intuition, maybe even emotion. Think of yourself as a piece of God. Influential on the earth plane. That's a concept, isn't it? Let me give you another concept. Visualize yourself out of trouble. <laughs> no drama, no problems, no fear, no phobias, no health issues, 
everything is solved, everything is pure. And you might say, well, Cryon, that isn't the way it is. Isn't that denial? If, I, if I'm having trouble, how can I imagine not having trouble? Oh, how 3D of you. You really believe it's going to be that way all your life, do you? In a circle where there is no time, it's solved, it's gone, it's resolved, it's cured. And there you sit. Can you go there with it? Can you have the concept of problems solved? If you can't, you're not going to go very far. Because the fear and the drama is going to sit upon there. And the connection will never happen. Not really. Not like we're asking. You'll have a little light. But you won't have the whole thing. We're almost done. I've got one more to put in the circle. It's beautiful, it is. It's no more important than the others, but it should be done at the same time. And here it is. Image yourself opening the door to home. <laughs> Image yourself actually pushing upon a door. And on the other side of that door, there is a hand that reaches out to you. And if the hand could speak, and it will, and it does, it would say, welcome, dear ones. We've been waiting for you for a very long time. You're trying to connect to a creator that wants to be connected with. Did you know that? It's not a one-way push. It's not. In this new energy, dear human being, the divinity that you are trying to get in touch with is trying to get in touch with you. You're not alone. Find the pathway. These are the concepts, the beginning concepts, never given in this fashion before, and yet so many given separately before. To a group of light workers awakening in a land that is awakening. <laughs> Walking on pure ground that has the energy of Gaia and nothing else and never has. Do you understand the significance of this place? For what you do here affects everyone. Oh, you're not the only ones. There are so many in other places that have their task to have their awakening but I sit in Australia and I wanted to tell you how pure your land is I want to tell you what the connection is to Gaia we'll try to explain the purification that is going on and all the things that don't make much sense to you but that have to do with the love of God there's a shift happening and that's why you came that's why you came did you ever think of that? What are you going to do about it? Here you sit in these moments. And you know the meeting is going to be over in a moment. In three dimensions, you might say, well, this is where a cryon leaves. How 3D of you. There's no leaving. There's no arriving. In a dimension you call home. There is only being. A beautiful being. An existence out of time. Oh, cryon, I wish I understood the plan of Earth. I would like to tell you something, that when you're not here, you know all of it. You come in with the agreement for a cloud to be over your intellect of spiritual things, so you can't see the reasons. And that is part of the test. Wake up.
touch the divinity inside find God in there and all things begin to balance to straighten out for inside of you is perfection a piece and a part that wants to be found a piece and a part that wants to have symmetry there's actually a grid of existence and energy a lattice inside that when activated starts to balance the very core of your soul helps you to reach out through the door and touch the creator that you are that's what we teach and some will see it and some will not and some would love to do it but they cannot because they do not see the concepts we've given they will not allow belief or intuition maybe not even emotion and that is why we give you these things so you'll know how before I leave let me tell you something I'm not leaving go out the door with every one of you in my own way in my own way there is a divine presence that walks with every human being should you choose to see it to feel it to imagine it to know it we pretend to to show up here and channel and then leave that's not the way it is it's just in 3d it's just for you I was in the building before you arrived. I expected your face here. I knew you were coming. You'd made arrangements. I knew you were coming. So did the entourage know you were coming so we could sit next to you and wash your feet and hold your hand and touch your head and your shoulders and your knees. To do our best to alert you that this is real and not something esoterically imagined just for a few folks who want to be patted on the head spiritually. You know? You know, there's a lot more to it. A lot more to it. And so it is.